By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against brand new patron Tony. Tony, welcome to the channel and thank you for supporting the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. It is very much appreciated. And um, you're going to play uh, against me with a black discard deck. <laughs> this is going to be hard for me, this episode. Um, and you've chosen to play according to the Eternal Central rules. That means four strip mines is allowed and Fallen Empires is allowed and Mana Burn is real. And I'm actually battling your uh, mono black discard deck with my mono green land destruction deck. It's got ice storms, it's got uh, strip mines, it's got a lot of nasty stuff and you know big green creatures that i want to play out to attack you actually they're not that big anyway more about that in the deck tech section of this video now before i jump into the deck techs i would first like to thank our sponsor 341 trading for sponsoring this video 341 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. I feel so professional having a sponsor, it feels good. Anyway, um, onwards with our video. Uh, we're now going to jump into the deck decks. Now, if you wanna uh, skip the deck deck section, go to the games first. I know some people prefer to do this. The easiest way uh, to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the games and you can check out the deck decks later. Or you could just stay here because now we are going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Tony. Let's have a look. And here we see the mono black deck of Tony. So this is really like your the rec deck, although there are some like interesting choices that Tony has made. Uh, maybe first try to explain what a the rec deck is. So the rec is an artifact from antiquities. It's only one to cast and it's the opposite of black vice. It reads at the beginning of the chosen player's upkeep, which is going to be your opponent. When you cast it, you choose a player. So you would, you know, say your opponent. And then the rec deals X damage to that player where X is three minus the number of cards in their hand. So if you've got three cards or more in your hand, the rec doesn't deal damage to you, you're home safe. But as soon as you go under the three, the rec starts to work. Now, this card is really good in formats that allow fallen empires like Eternal Central, because then you can play with him to Turek. Him to Turek is the best card in fallen empire. I think we don't have to argue about it. Fallen empire is a much better set than most people give it credit for. Um, and him to Turek, for me at least, is like, above all the other cards in the set. It's just an amazing card. Is it fun? I, you know, that's debatable, um, but it's a really good card and, and it has beautiful uh, different types of art as well. Anyway, let's take a look at what the card does in case you don't know, maybe you've been living under a rock since 1994, who knows? Um, him to Turek is too black to cast for a sorcery that reads target opponent or target player, I guess you could target yourself in theory, uh, has to discard two cards at random and i mean that at random part it's already insane to force your opponent to discard two cards it's a two for one a clean cut two for one which is already insane but it's at random it makes it even more painful like the amount of times that a to turek has then forced me to discard the land card that i needed or that you know that one bolt i needed to take down a hippie which is also in this deck by the way that has happened too often to me and i don't even play with fallen empires that much but him is this card, I'm like, oh no. As soon as I play against a black player uh, and we're playing a format like Atlantic or in this case, uh, Eternal Central where you can play with Fallen Empires, as soon as that second black hits the table, I'm in, I'm in the worry zone. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna get himed, I'm gonna get himed. And actually playing against the mono black deck is pretty nerve wracking because turn one, you worry about Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Hypnotic Spectre, of course, another creature that goes together really well with the rec deck because the hippie, as we all know, a 2-2 flyer, when it deals damage, the opponent has to discard a card and again, at random. So, I mean, hippie and him, they just go together, you know, like uh, peanut butter and jelly, it, it, it just works. 
And then we also have one uh, Disrupting Scepter in the deck. Now, what I find interesting here, uh, uh, looking at this list, he, he's made some interesting choices. Um, I love the Greed in combination with the Drain Life. I like that Greed and Enchantment, uh, pay a black, pay two life, draw a card. So it's kind of like a cheaper Gem Day Tome. It's, it's quite good also for to cast like a Gem Day Tome. Um, and then Drain Life, of course, is going to give you life back. So then you can use that life to invest into your greed and draw more cards and keep pressure on your opponent. Because this is one of those uh, decks where most of your spells are, are fairly cheap to cast. So you do always have the risk of kind of running out of steam. And then if your opponent isn't dead yet, you know, he can take over the game. So, so greed could be quite good here. Um, to me, what really stands out, and I'm curious, Tony, to hear from you in the comments, you're only playing with one strip mine. To me, that looks quite odd. I would always play with four strips in a deck like this, also because you're playing with four sinkholes, so you already kind of have that land destruction theme going on. Now, I do understand that destroying the lands of your opponent doesn't always go hand, hand in hand with, uh, with that strategy of having a direct deck. Um, but yeah, then again, it's just so good to do. And at least then you always know that your opponent has enough cards in hand to force him to discard with the him. And, you know, you can have like this total control, maybe play with an extra disrupting scepter, have this control game. And at the same time, while you're controlling, you're always quite also, I should say, quite aggressive uh, because you've got, you know, you've got your orders, the Black Pump Knights, you've got your, your Black Knight. Those are quite cheap creatures to cast. You've got your Dark Rituals, right, to get your hippie out early. Um, you're playing with one Singer Vampire, which I like. It's always, always good to play with like one a little bit bigger creature, a creature with muscle. Um, so I kind of liked it. I think in this deck, a Nightmare could also be quite useful. Uh, you're also playing with four Mishra's Factory. So those are very cheap uh, creatures as well. So yeah, this is just looking like a very traditional uh, mono black deck. And um, it's quite strong. And actually, I'm happy you're not playing with four strip, but I kind of expected you to. Talking about four strip mines... I am playing with four strip mines. <laughs> Let's take a look at my uh, mono green deck. And here you see my mono green deck. And this is a deck that I also play at uh, Swedish events where they allow reprints. And I've kind of took that deck idea and kind of turned it around to an Eternal Central. Uh, the biggest change that I've made in this deck is that I've put four strip mines in. Simple as that. Usually I only play one. So now I just added three more slots, three more strip mines. Um, and I'm, I mean... The idea of this deck, it's pretty straightforward. I just want to ramp up ideally with Lanawar Elves. So turn one Lanawar Elves, turn two, hopefully, uh, you know, play an Ice Storm, destroy some lands of my opponent, then try to play my bigger creatures like my Urnum, my Giant Spider. I'm also playing with um, uh, Elvish Archers, the two one first striker. That's actually kind of maybe nice to mention that the, uh, the Swedish version plays Argovian Pixies. And for the Eternal Central version, I chose to go with Elvish um, Archers. The reason for that is that I'm expecting him to play with the Pum Knights, which he does, or other first strike creatures. So I can go first strike, first strike, right? And then I don't lose, well, I lose my creatures, but it's an even trade, if you know what I mean. So I thought the Archers would be better in Eternal Central um, than the Argovian Pixies. I don't know as much about the Eternal Central, uh, you know, meta game because I don't play it that often. So let me know in the comments if you agree with my analysis or if you think it's uh, just pure baloney. Could be pure baloney. Let me know. I like the word baloney. It's funny. Remember, I'm not a native English speaker. So sometimes I'm using these words. I'm like, oh, that's a funny word. Um, anyhow, looking at the rest of the deck, um, you know, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to play Lanora Elves, try to do, do the Ice Storm thing, try to play out my creatures starting from that point forward. Um, again, I also have those Strip Mines. So I've got eight land removal spells. So it's really a land destruction deck. Um, and then, of course, I've got this combination between Giant Grove and Berserk. So Giant Grove is an instant, one green, gift star creature, plus three, plus three. So let's say I put that on my Urnum. My Urnum then turns into a 7-8 creature. That's huge, right? Going to turn it sideways, going to attack with it. Then my opponent wants to block it, maybe chum block it with, let's say, a Black Knight or something. What I can do then is play a Berserk on it, and Berserk doubles the power of my creature and gives it Trample. So then all of a sudden... My Urnum Gin becomes a 14-8 uh, Trampler, right? So that is huge, like 14 Trample. And that's kind of the explosiveness that, that my deck wants, you know? Those are the plays that I'm looking for. So just one really big hit, and hopefully I've been able to deal him some damage prior to that big hit. And then also I'm playing with a Hurricane, which is kind of like a Fireball. It's kind of like a finisher in this deck. Now, the thing I'm a little bit worried about in this matchup is all that discard power of Tony. I think if, if Tony can really early in the game start disrupting my hand, 
I just have to be lucky to maybe, you know, draw a silver and have enough life to kind of get cards, extra cards in to kind of get my momentum going. But without discard, this is already a deck that sometimes simply runs out of gas and then just loses the game. You don't want to top deck with this deck. And, um, you know, that's exactly what Tony is probably going to force me to do if he draws into uh, his discard spells, right? So I just have to hope that he cannot find the discard spells. Another thing I'm a little bit worried about is that my strategy to destroy his lands is not going to be really good against him because he's got a very low mana curve. He doesn't need a lot of lands to be successful. So even with two black mana, he can play out like 80% of his deck. He's not really worried about me taking away land unless I can really like consistently keep destroying his lands. Then then it's also a tempo play, if you know what I mean. Um, after sideboarding, by the way, I have a full play set of Whirling Dervishes. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun uh, to play with. So, like I said, I can win, but I'm also kind of worried because Tony has got some really good weapons in his deck. Anyway, this is my list. We looked at the deck of Tony, and that only means one thing. We are ready, baby. Let's go. Discard versus land destruction. Black versus green. Here we go. Game a number one, here we go. Look at that, I'm taking a mulligan. So starting with six cards, I believe I'm gonna play here. I'm playing a mono green land destruction, taking on Tony, who's on mono black discard. So he's playing with him to Turex and stuff like that. So now I've got five cards in hand, started here with a Mishra's Factory and Tony starting with a Soul Ring. Let's see what I can do second turn. Can I find a land? I can, animating it, attacking for two. Another Factory, by the way. Pretty interesting. So playing another factory, putting Tony on 18, passing the turn back to him. Let's see what he can do. Can he find another swamp for maybe him? Nope, there's another Mishra's factory. So this is good news for me, right? I was really, well, yeah, I was really kind of scared for him to Turek, you know, that would uh, set me back. Ooh, Demonic Tutor, that's also quite nice. I'm pretty worried. I'm, what I'm afraid of here is that Tony is going to look up a Mind Twist, which is pretty good with that Soul Ring. The next turn, if he has a land drop, he could twist me for four, which would be a huge problem. So I have to try. If I have land destruction, okay, there's a Strip Mine. This is great. Taking care of the Swamp, but now I just have to hope that Tony doesn't have another Black Source in hand. First attacking for two, of course, putting Tony here on 16. I mean, we've seen the deck photo of Tony. He's playing with a lot of swamps, obviously, in mono black. So, okay, okay, not a swamp here. So I'm really lucky. So he could animate here, swing in. He does not. So two factories on both sides of the table, playing a full playset in, uh, in both decks. I wonder if I have a forest. I mean, I wouldn't keep a hand without a forest, right? I mean, I'm playing mono green. That would be kind of silly. There it is. There's the forest. Going to tap three here. There's the ice storm. So I'm going to take out one of the lands. Four cards in hand, passing the turn to Tony. Ooh, finding a swamp here. Does he have the mind twist? That's a big question. Could twist me for three here. Tapping the black, untapping again. What are we going to see? I mean, maybe he didn't look up the twist. That's also a possibility. And I think this shows how many cards he's got in hand. So six cards in hand. Okay, there's a ritual. So not a twist. Ritual into him to Turak. Also quite good. So four cards in hand and have to discard at random. I think that's why him is so good because it's at random. It's going to lose two cards here. Elfish archers in a strip mine. Ah, oh, that strip would have been so nice for that swamp. But I'm going to lose it here. Tapping two, so three in total. There's a disrupting scepter. Yeah, that's pretty good. So next turn he can start using his scepter. So I've got to try to empty my hand here. Tapping, okay, animating the factory, attacking here. Of course, he cannot block, putting a giant growth on it, dealing five. It looks like I'm going to miss a land drop here, though, and that's uh, unfortunate. Two cards in hand. 
Maybe I'm keeping a land in hand because I want to discard it to Deceptor. That could be a line as well. We'll just have to wait and see. So Tony taking his turn. Is he going to use Deceptor or does he have better options? Thinking about using that Soul Ring there. Taking his time. Trying to weigh off his options. He is going to use the Scepter here. Oh, forcing me to discard one of my two cards. What do I have in hand? What is it going to be? I oh, Berserk. Oh, if only I would have had a second green. I could have dealt 10 that previous turn after the Giant Grove. But yeah, there wasn't a second green, I guess. I'm, I'm sure that's not a forest in my hand. Or else I would have played out the forest, Giant Grove, Berserk. That would have been perfect, you know. Emptying my hand and dealing tons of damage. There's another forest, okay, from the top. Tapping four. There's a giant spider, okay. So I kept the spider hoping to top deck that land, and I did. So giant spider, a 2-4 creature uh, with reach. So it's really useful against the hypnotic specters. There's a second black. And now the scepter, of course, not really useful for Tony anymore because my hand's empty. Ooh, there's a Paralyze. Taking care of the spider. So that card there underneath shows the uh, the Paralyze of Tony. So Paralyze and Enchant creature taps target creature down. And during my upkeep, I can pay four to untap it. And this is quite nice, right? Because Tony's saying, you know, if you pay four to untap it, you probably cannot play out the card you just drew. Um, you know, meaning that I'm going to force you to discard it with my Scepter when it's my turn. So it's kind of a no-brainer for me not to untap the spider attacking here with my 2-2. It looks like he is going to activate his factory. I'm going to pump up mine to a 3-3. Three, three. He can make it a 3-3. Three, three. Then do I have a pump spell here? Yes, I do. I've got a giant growth. So uh, putting the pressure on. Killing the factory on the side of Tony. Passing the turn back to him. He's going to go up to four cards in hand, I believe. Tap two black. There's a sinkhole. Ooh, probably going to, yeah, going to take care of one of the factories. That's unfortunate. Really wanted to swing in. Also, now I can no longer untap my giant spider. Looks like I'm going to animate here. Swing in for two. Going to put him on nine. Do I have another pump spell? No, I don't. And of course, I already played out two giant growths, playing a full playset in this deck. Ooh, there's a factory. That's quite nice for Tony. Tapping two black. What are we going to see? There's a black knight. And now he can also use a scepter, by the way. He could use a scepter to force me to discard that one card. He's not doing it, though. A little bit surprised about this. Tapping a green for a Llanowar Elves. So next turn, I can untap my spider, I guess. It would be a good blocker for that uh, Black Knight. Tony on 8. I'm still on 20. I do kind of feel that Tony is slowly taking over the game here. He's got more cards in hand and has that Scepter. But hey, I'm still on 20. Tapping 3, using the Scepter. So forcing me to discard the one card in hand. Ah, Berserk. That is unfortunate. Like, you want to make that play giant growth berserk but because he keeps pressuring my hand i haven't really had the chance to do so playing another creature another black knight i mean those two black knights they've got first strike so it's perfect to make a double block with both of them making it really hard for me to attack top decking a forest here passing the turn so i'm kind of stuck And it's also tough for Tony, right? Because if he attacks, he can run into my factory and the factory can pump itself, making it a 3-3, killing a Black Knight. This Pump Knight could be quite good. Because for two Black, you can give a plus one, plus oh, and for one Black, first strike. So he could attack with it next turn. And then if I block with my uh, factory, he could give it plus one, plus oh, and trade it. Oh, look at this, going to untap my Spider. A little bit worried about his offensive capabilities. Now, the difficult thing here is that I have to decide to untap the spider before I get to see my card, right? Untap, upkeep, and then draw. So in my upkeep, I have to make this decision. It looks like I uh, top-decked a land, though. So 
That's pretty nice. Oh, Sengir Vampire. Oh, no. The one Sengir in the deck of Tony. This is a problem. The Sengir is a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, man. There's a script Sprites. Okay, so if he attacks with the Sengir, yes, I take 4, but I can at least attack with the Sprites, deal 1. That's something. It's not a lot, but it's something. If it can then find a Pendlehaven. Oh, there's a Mace. Dang it. Yeah, he's now kind of finding the cards he needs, and he's still on 9, which is pretty high, you know. Starts attacking with the Sengir here, gonna drop to 14. Yes, yeah, Sengir is really a problem for me. I need my Hurricane. I think Hurricane is really my best bet here. Just play a huge Hurricane, you know, kill the Sengir and deal some damage to Tony. The problem is I'm only playing with one Sengir Vampire main. Another line I could go for. Yeah, there's the attack. I mean, he's got the mace. Maybe he forgets. Ooh, he's taking the damage. Don't do it, Tony. Use your mace. Use your mace, Tony. Anyway, sometimes they forget. You can see that here. So just my advice is always just attack with the sprites. Yeah, he's seeing it now. And he was, he was pretty chill about it, because I remember this. I said, you know, if you, you know, you can put the damage back, it doesn't matter. But he's like, no, 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 it's good. You know, punish me, I'll take the damage, and I'll remember. Anyway, Tony can swing in here again for four, which I guess that's what I would do. It's looking really good here for Tony. He's got a lot of blockers, he's got the maze, and he's just attacking with the 4-4. Four, four. I mean, I've got four more turns to find an answer to this. And my green deck is, is quite bad. Maybe if I can find another spider, you know, I could double block on a spider or another giant growth, but it's going to be really tough. Mm, I wonder what that card is tapping one. Just a Lanoer. Oh man, I'm getting closer and closer to the, to the abyss here. This is a problem on 12, Tony on 8, but that's going to change. He's probably going to put me on 8 now as well. There's the attack. Yeah, that's all he has to do. Just keep attacking with your one Sengir. Put me on 8 here. That's really a problem. Now untap. I can't believe one Sengir is just putting me from 20 to 0. More small creatures. Oh, and it's like really bad because yes, I got a lot of creatures on the board, but they're so small. And Tony has got a lot of blockers as well. And of course, the mace. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven creatures. Tony has got the factory. So one, he's got six creatures and the mace. So it's, it's really not going to help me. Of course, he's going to attack again. I'm going to go to four. I, maybe I should jump here because then if I draw the hurricane, I can still play it out. I think I should jump and just hope for a hurricane on the top of my deck. So I'm really taking my time here. Of course, if I block, I make the Sengir a 5-5, but that doesn't matter if it's a 5-5 or... Oh, look at this blocking on the giant spider, actually. And oh, he's also attacking with his... Orders of the Ebon Hand, I didn't see that. I was so focused on the Sengir. So he's going to pump up one of his knights to a 4-1, trading it for the Spider. I'm going to go to 4. I think I should jump the Sengir here as well, because my only out at the moment, which is now gone, would have been a Hurricane. Play a huge Hurricane to kill the Sengir. It's a land instead, so I guess it wouldn't have mattered, but... Um, I think that would have been a better play. Anyway, a Tony winning here. Game one on that very strong MVP of this match. Sengir Vampire. Well done, Tony. Uh, we are going to dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So one game up for Tony. Going to draw his seven. I'm on the play, of course, after losing that first game. And I'm pretty sure I boarded in my Whirling Dervishes. Got a full play set in the sideboard, so looking forward to see those cards in action. There's a Scripps Sprites. Passing the turns, that's a pretty good start for me. Hopefully I can also find a Pendlehaven to pump it up. Oh, there's a Maze though by Tony. What an opener. 
Maze of if. Well, I have a lot of land destruction. Maybe strip mine here, take care of the maze, and then attack with the sprites. That would be pretty sweet. And then maybe also play another card out, like a Lanarer or a Scavenger Folk. I am taking my time here. Okay, there's another forest, so no strip mine. Tapping two. There's an Elfish Archer and a pass turn. So not attacking with the sprites this time. So a 2 1 first striker on my side of the board. Tony finding a swamp here. Passing the turn. So now at least I can attack with both. Hopefully deal one point of damage. Or, oh, there's a strip mine. Stripping the maze here. Taking care of business. Could swing in here for three. Put him on 17. Yep, there I go. Into the red zone. Putting Tony on 17. Tapping a green. What else is there to come? There's a soul ring. Do we also have a ice storm perhaps? That would be quite good. Taking care of that one swamp. Look at me go here tapping. No, not an ice storm. I thought for a moment there was an ice storm. I do get one damage from mana burn. But hey, that Sylvan is pretty good as well because I'm pretty high up in life so I can start drawing some extra cards. Only two cards in hand. Tony finding here a, a Mishra's Factory. Not a second black. I keep being worried about those him to Turex. <laughs> Just so kind of in my system. Him, 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 him. But actually, he only played one him in game one. It's not that bad. And here in game two, uh, hasn't played one yet. Passing to turn back to me. So I've got four mana. So if I can find an Urnum, that would be ideal here. Tacking with both. Remember, um, the Mistress Factory still has Summoning Sickness, so he cannot tap it to pump itself yet. It's now just a 2-2. Two -two. And there's a Giant Grove. I don't think I even need a Grove. It's a bit of a misplay, right? Because, I mean... Minus first strike, so I'm not really sure why I'm doing this. Maybe I also have a Berserk in hand. Yeah, I've got a Berserk in hand. That's why I'm doing it. Okay, and still... I wonder, maybe I'm a little bit too hasty with this. I'm not really liking this play, to be honest, because it was just a clean block by Tony. I had first strike to just kill the factory, which is really good exchange, and wait for the right moment. Of course, there's always a risk if Tony finds a second... Swamp, you know, and place out a him. So maybe that's my reasoning, but still. Anyway, Tony now on nine. It's looking quite good for me here. But remember, I had a pretty good starting game one as well. And then I lost against that very big Sanger Vampire. Here's another factory for Tony. Passing the turn back to me. So at least I can fly over the factory. Taking an extra card, going down to 19. I mean, an Ice Storm here would be great as well. There's a Strip, basically does the same thing. Looks like I'm going to tap. No, I'm going to use the Strip Mine here. I wonder what I'm going to Strip. I would be tempted to just go for the Swamp here. Going for the Factory instead. Tacking for one. Gonna put Tony here on eight. There's an Urnum Jin four five. Yeah, it's looking really good for me. And Tony only having that one swamp. Okay, there's the second. Gonna play a terror here. Yep, that's really good. Playing the terror on the Urnum. Passing the turn back to me. But I mean, I think the Sylvan is just doing a lot of work for me here. Taking again an extra card, going to go to 11. Yeah, probably found some more land removal. There's the Ice Storm. Attacking for one. Going to put him on seven. There's the Whirling Dervish. So Whirling Dervish is a card originally from Legends. This is a reprint. The whole deck is mainly reprints, by the way. So this is a 1-1 one, one from Legends. Protection from Black. When it deals damage to the opponent, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this is going to be really tough. For Tony to deal with. I mean, I don't think there's anything in his list actually. Well, a factory could help. A factory can block it being an artifact creature. 
Tony here playing his second black. It looks like he's just going to pass the turn, though. That would be really good news for me. So here we can really see my green deck kind of doing what it wants to do. Going to go here through the three cards, picking just the one. I can attack it for two, put Tony on a five. And of course, my Dervish will get a counter or not. What are we going to see here? Tapping two black, maybe another terror. There's another one on the script sprites. So he's just going to take one damage. Going to go to six. And another Dervish, yeah. Picking out those Dervishes with the Sylvan. Putting them on the board. It's going to be really tough for Tony finding land number three. But there's not anything he can cast to block the uh, the Whirlings. Exactly. There's an Hypnotic Spectre, a good card, but not right now in this scenario. So I'm going to look at my top three cards again. So I can swing in here for three. Put him on two. And then, of course, both my Durfishes will get an extra bonus. Or, of course, finding a Giant Grove. That's it. Winning a game number two here. That means it's a 1-1. One, one, and we're going to go to an all decisive game. Number three. Game number three. Here we go. Who is going to win this Eternal Central Battle? Is it going to be a brand new patron, Tony Z, on a Mono Black? This card. Did I say this card? I mean this card. Or is it going to be me, the Timmy, with a Mono Green a Land Destruction? We are about to find out. Starting with a forest into a Lunar Elves. It's a good start for me. Ideally want to cast a, an Ice Storm next turn. There's a Swamp. There's a Mox Jet. And oh, there's a him. Yeah. Mox Jet into him. This is like a dream opening for Tony. And um, I guess I was lucky that I wasn't faced with like a turn one discard in the previous two games. But yeah, now I'm going to lose two cards here to the him. A Berserk gone. Ooh, and that Ice Storm gone. That kind of hurts. That kind of hurts. Really. I mean, it's ideal for my deck to play that Ice Storm. Okay, so I'm finding a Strip Mine, but it's not the same. Attacking for one. Three cards in hand. Tapping green. Okay, so it's a pretty good turn. I can't complain. I mean, I'm destroying a land on his side, playing out a creature and dealing a damage. So, you know, those are those are good things, but... Tony has got such a low curve, like just destroying one land, probably not going to make a dent. I think that Mox Jet makes a big difference here. At least he cannot play out a Hippie, that's something. But he could cast a Pump Knight here or, okay, a Sinkhole. Yeah, a Sinkhole, it could be annoying for me. Let's see what I can find. So three cards in hand right now. Okay, I am finding a land. It's a factory though, attacking for two. So Tony dropping to 17, passing the turn. Ooh, there's another land. Are we going to see a hippie? That would be really bad news for me. A mind twist. Okay, that's even worse. <laughs> oh man, giant grove gone and an ice storm gone. That is unfortunate. Especially that giant grove would have been quite nice. Tapping two here. Okay, there's a Sylvan. I mean, the Sylvan is one of the better cards for me to draw. It gives me a chance to do some card selection, maybe draw some extra cards. I'm still on 20. We saw the Sylvan doing really uh, a lot of work for me in game number two. So I wonder what Tony's going to do here. There's a Mace. Ah, that's annoying. And tapping three for Hippie. Okay, yeah, this is a problem. If I can find a Pendlehaven now, I haven't seen a single Pendlehaven. Maybe I should play three in my list instead of uh, two. I mean, it's so good. It works on Scavenger Folks, the Pixies, the Lanawar Elves. I mean, I've got 12 targets for it. It's going to go to 16 here. There's another factory. Okay, that's something. I don't think there's really good attack here. One card in hand. Hopefully that one card. Okay, look at this. I'm attacking with the 2-2, two -two, kind of offering Tony a trade if he wants to, but now he's using his mace, just sending it back. Passing the turn. The problem here is if he attacks, 
And, you know, let's say I've got a giant growth. I used to grow for my pixies, and then uh, on my script sprites, I mean, then in response, Tony will use his mace, take his hippie out of combat, and I'm, I'm done, you know, I'm going to lose a uh, giant growth. Exactly, here's the giant growth, so he's probably going to use the mace here. Ooh, he's going to use a terror. Yeah, that has the same effect. Going to use a terror. And I'm asking, did you do this before blocks or after blocks are declared? You're saying, well, you already declared blocks. So that makes sense because I, of course, first declare blocks, then play the giant growth, then he responds with the terror. So I don't take the damage in this case, but yeah, it's tough. But like I said, another thing you could have done was use the maze, take it out of combat and say, okay, this just this whole thing just cost you a, uh, a giant growth. So that maze is just, the maze is so good offensively. People tend to forget that, but... It may be even better offensively in these type of decks than it is uh, defensively. Anyway, 12. So choose and go for an extra card. Okay, there's a Whirling Dervish. I believe in it. The problem, of course, is that he can still use his mace. But next turn, you know, I'm expecting him to attack with the, with the hippie, right? Put me on 10. And then I can attack with all my creatures, hopefully deal some damage. Look at me go, though, animating, forcing Tony to use the mace. I just like turning my creatures sideways. I don't know. Oh, another maze. Dang. This is really... Like, this second maze is really bad. Like, one maze is a problem. And remember, I'm playing with a lot of land removal, but you got to find it. And, you know, he already forced me to, to discard one of my ice storms, or two of my ice storms, actually. I also already played out one uh, strip mine, so... It's going to be tough. Like normally, I'm not really worried about mazes of if when you play with eight land destruction spells, but here you can see it works. So I'm animating both of my factories here, by the way, swinging in for four. It's probably going to send back the. Okay, going to send back both of the factories. So I'm going to deal two points of damage. Hey, it's something. And my Dervish gets a counter. I mean, it's not great, but it's something. So my Dervish now a 2 2. Let's see what Tony can do. Two cards in hand. Attacking. Going to put me on eight. Yeah, and the problem here is that I, I cannot afford to use my Sylvans. Or my, well, my one Sylvan. It's not plural. I only have one. Oh, there's a forest. There is a forest. This is not what you want to do in life. Anyway, attacking with everything here. Let's see if Tony now sends back the Dervish. Going to use both of his mazes. Yeah, and now I can use that one factory to pump up the other factory. And then I still deal four points of damage. Which is actually a damage extra, so it would have been better for him to just send back both of the uh, factories still in this case. Ah, playing out of Black Knight. Ah! Every time I think I'm seeing a small opening... He's closing it again. I'm on 6. Tony's on 10. I think the conclusion here is that my deck is pretty bad against Flyers. I need to put... Maybe I put in the extra Hurricane, by the way. I wonder if I did. There's one extra Hurricane in the sideboard, so then it would play two Hurricanes. I mean, a Hurricane would be quite good here. Ooh, what's that? It's another Order. Well, another the first Order here. Hitting the board. Oh, look at this. Using my Berserk to get rid here of, uh, of the Hippie. I'm really in desperation mode. Two measly life. That is not great. That is not great. So two measly life for me. Passing the turn back. But hey, I mean, at least he doesn't have a flyer anymore. Got my Dervish to block. I'm feeling good. I'm alive. Tony on 10. I'm on 2. Passing the turn back to Tony. If I can just find a way to get rid of the mazes and maybe find a flyer. Stepping 2 black. What are we going to see for 2? Ooh, a bad moon. That means his Black Knight is now a 3-3. Three, three. His Order is now a 3-2. And he can pump it and give it first strike. So it looks pretty scary. I'm going to draw 3. 
Luckily, I've got that one Whirling Dervish. If I can just find a second one. Looks like I'm going to tap four here. Do I want to, though? I mean, if I, I shouldn't play out an Urnum. Don't let this be an Urnum. Please, I hope I'm better in Magic than this. Because if I play an Urnum, I'm going to give my opponent Force Walk. Okay, good. It's a giant spider. I'm not that stupid. You know, because then I would give my opponent's creature Force Walk and he would win the game. Because it's then unblockable and I'm on two. Oh, no. There's a Dark Ritual. We're going to see Drain Life. Same gear. Oh, equally bad. Well, not as bad as a Drain Life because I still now have a turn. But this is a problem. Need a Giant Growth here to put on the Giant Spider so I can gobble up. Uh, at least finding a strip. I could strip a maze, I think. Don't have to do it now, of course, but could strip a maze. Yeah, Tony's on 10. It's just too much. He's going to attack with the Sengir. I have to block then on the spider. So I'm going to lose the spider. I will have two, five creatures left. He's got two blockers and a maze. So I can only get two creatures through. Those are probably going to be my two Lanora Elves. So that's going to be two damage for Tony. And he's on 10. So that's not going to work. There's a terror. Oh, no. He's going to kill the spider. Oh, ho, ho. I am dead. Well done, Tony. You got this one, my man. Winning this match 2-1 to one with his Mono Black discard deck. And I have to say the MVP here is really good old Sengir Vampire. That card really delivered here. Thank you, uh, Tony, for this match. And also thank you for sponsoring uh, the show. Uh, and if you would also like to become a patron just like Tony, check out patreon.com slash Talks to read how you can become a patron of the show. It already starts for just one dollar a month and for that dollar you get access to the timmy talks a discord page and also you can join into uh, in on all the online events that i organize all the online tournaments that we do together um, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the Somebody can see.